Gut, einen wunderschönen guten Abend, liebe Coaches, zur heutigen Zoom-Klinik mit äh, Coach Michael Nahum. Ähm, Coach Nahum wird heute über effektives Wechseln zwischen Out- und Even-Fronts sprechen. Ähm, wieder ein Thema, das grundsätzlich die Defense erst einmal interessiert. Ähm, Coach Nahum ist äh, defense Coordinator an der Marvin Ridge High School in äh, Charlotte in North Carolina. Und ähm, ich bin sicher, dass wir heute ziemlich interessant hier Theorien hören werden, wie man eigentlich zwischen Ort und Even Fronts wechselt. Für mich persönlich, da bin ich letztes Jahr dran gescheitert. Wir haben das nicht so gut gemacht. Deswegen glaube ich, dass wir in dem Vortrag durchaus einiges mitnehmen können. Um, Coach Nahum, you can start now. Okay. So, the stage is yours. Okay. Let me try to get to my screen here. Mm -hmm. No, 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 I'm good. All right, just give me a second. Ah, oh, there you go. Gentlemen, I'm going to pull up my screen here, and then um, I can start uh, talking to you guys in the meanwhile. And I'm going to go over, I'm going to go over stuff that we do here, and I'm going to explain it how I explain it to players, and how I explain it to our young coaches on staff, and when I speak at the Glazier Clinic. And I do other clinics. Um, Coach, can you see the screen that's up? Uh, yes, we can see your huddle account now. Oh, okay, perfect, perfect. Okay. So I will tell you guys this. Number one, it's a great honor to be here. Um, I can tell you that um, as far as um, getting everybody together to collaborate, there's no other sport or organization in the world other than football that really enables you to do this you know you generally don't see like apple and sony like doing zoom clinics together okay so it's important that we share information together to improve our sport for our players because ultimately at the end of the day we are here to serve the players we are not here to serve each other and to serve ourselves Okay. If we don't show up to work, there still will be football. The players make plays. Your job is to put them in a position to make them and to evaluate your players and use the personnel the best as possible. Um, and that basically is what I think is lost a lot. Everybody talks about scheme and not everybody talks about um, utilizing personnel and evaluating personnel. Okay, And I think that is what's important. Okay, so I'm going to go over, I'm going to go over um, our different fronts. Okay, and I'm going to talk about odd fronts and even fronts. Okay, so the biggest way that you can do things, and I'm going to draw it up. Coach, you can see this diagram, correct? Yes, we can see that. Okay, perfect. So I'm just going to explain our defensive structure here. So we play a even and odd front. We utilize our rush linebacker as our fourth defensive lineman, okay? He's going to be our call side player in base defense, okay? Meaning this, if we use the term base defense, he is simply going to be attached to the defensive line, okay? The player names is we're going to play with a nose and two defensive ends, We're going to play with the boundary corner, which we call a weak corner. Our strong corner goes to the field or goes to the passing strength. Our strong safety goes to the field or the passing strength. And when I say field or passing strength, obviously when the ball's at the hash, he will go to the field. The weak safety travels to the boundary or away from the passing strength. Our will is the inside linebacker to the boundary 
or away from the passing strength, and our mic is our inside linebacker to the field or to the passing strength. And our Sam Nickel is our down player. Our, he is like our hybrid player. So just to give you guys, um, I, I just want to explain the players because I, I think a lot of times um, I'm going to be talking or coaches are talking and I, we don't understand each other because we don't understand like the player names. So our Mike and Will, our Mike linebacker right here, our Sam Nickel and our strong safety travel together. Our will, our weak safety, and our weak corner travel together. When we want to use an even front, our rush linebacker is attached to the defensive line. So an example here, let's say we want to run base. And base just simply means our rush is a defensive lineman. Okay? So I would say about 80% of the time he's going to be on the defensive line. 20% of the time he's going to be a drop linebacker. So let's say we want to run base field, okay? And I'm going to talk about fronts right now. I'm not going to talk a ton about coverages. Our rush goes to the call side. So this would be closed left, okay? He goes to the call side right here. And let's say we want to play a 4-3 or we want to play cover four, quarters coverage. Our backers just simply will bump over and adjust. If we wanted to play cover three, in our base front, let's say our call was field, three sky. Sky means it's our weak safety rotating down. Our corner comes up, and it basically looks like a 4-4. Four four. We use this guy as an adjuster. So let's say we wanted to run a boundary call. So let's say we said base, boundary, sky. Base means that the rush is the call side C gap player, so the Mike linebacker would say close right. The defensive end to the call is responsible for the B gap. The nose is responsible for the A gap away from the call. The defensive end away from the call is responsible for the C gap. So the rush is the C gap player to the call side. The defensive end to the call side is responsible for the B gap. The nose is responsible for the A gap away from the call. And our defensive end away from the call is responsible for the C gap. And then we can play whatever coverages we want, okay? Now, let's say we wanted to run base back. We wanted to set the front to the running back. Our rush would be the call side C gap player, and the defensive linemen, the three linemen, are always responsible for the gap opposite of the call. Okay, so the defensive end to the closed side, this would be closed left. He goes to the B gap. The nose is responsible for the A gap away from the call. The defensive end away from the call is responsible for the C gap. And that's how we would play it. Okay, so that's base defense, and we can do a lot of things. So let's say we said base field um, 22. 22 means that our two interior players are playing head up two techniques. Okay, I'm just I'm just bringing this out so that you can understand where you don't have to sit in like a static front. The next front we will go to, okay, is our solid front. All solid means is our defensive end plays in a four, our nose plays in a zero, our defensive end plays in a four, okay? I'm not gonna talk about coverage a ton. Our rush linebacker is still the call side C gap player, but now what we do is we get to it from slanting our guys. So let's say we wanted to run solid field. The defensive end would here close left because we would close it to the field, okay? And our rush linebacker would be the play side C-gap player. So all solid means is we play a four technique, a zero and a four. They are still responsible for the gap opposite of the call, but now they're slanting to it. So it looks exactly like a three, four defense would look, okay? Let's say we wanted to run solid and we wanted to run solid boundary three sky. The rush would go to the boundary, and then we would simply, the Mike linebacker would say close right because the boundary's to the side. And then we would slant opposite of the call, and then we would bring our weak safety down. Our strong safety would spin up. We pattern match everything and cover three just like 
Saban, Clemson, everything else. Uh, we don't play spot drop cover three. That's a whole nother clinic. But that's how we would play here. Okay, so that would be solid. Okay. Then we're going to get into, let's say we wanted to run our odd stuff, which we call Maverick. Maverick means that the rush linebacker is no longer attached to the defensive line call. He is an outside linebacker. Okay. So let's say for an example, we wanted to run Maverick and we wanted to run quarters coverage. We want to drop eight, which means we are dropping eight players into coverage. So we would drop our rush linebacker is always to the boundary. Always. He is always opposite the Sam Nickel. Okay. So when we say Maverick or odd front, we do it with on field personnel. Okay, that is the most efficient and effective way of running and jumping from even to odd fronts. All you need is a, a coach to cross train, excuse me, they call this guy a lot of times the Jack, but um, I worked with coach Bill Curry. He was the head coach for the University of Alabama. He was the head coach for University of Kentucky. Um, he started Georgia State football. His son, Bill Curry Jr., worked for him at Kentucky and Alabama, and I worked with him for about four to five years. And um, they taught me a lot of the defensive structure from that perspective, okay? So a lot of stuff we do is very uh, similar to like SEC, Southeast Conference schools um, in college, okay? So just to give you a, a brief overview, so, when we want to play a 3-4, our rush just goes to the boundary. That's simply it. If we want to run a base defense and even front, he's the call side C-gap player. The defensive line goes opposite. Okay? So let's say right here we just want to run Maverick, cover four, whatever your terminology is. Okay? So we want to drop eight. So the rush plays the flat, the will, and the Mike will play the hook. The Stan Nickel will play the flat. Terrible arrows on my part. I apologize. And you're playing just strictly quarters coverage right here. Okay? Strictly quarters coverage. If we wanted to say, hey, we want to run Maverick, the kids know, okay, coach called Maverick. So now we are in an odd front. And we want to say Maverick bench um, three sky. So that means we're going to close the front to the bench, to the boundary. So what did the defensive line have to know? Nothing. The mic says close right. The defensive line are responsible for the gap opposite of the call. The rush heard bench sky. He hears sky. The weak safety always comes down weak in our cover three package. Our rush blitzes. Our weak safety drops here. He plays the middle. You play with two hooks. We play our weak hook players three up is three. Our Sam Nickel will always play outside leverage. Okay, so in a perfect world right here, he would be right here playing outside leverage. We play Rip Liz match. Okay, so he would play off of the number two and three release to the side right here. And then our corner plays a deep third. Okay, so that's how we would get to an odd front. Um, out of our base package, okay? Another way you can do it is, and this is the, the easiest way to do it, but it, it takes a lot, it, it's not as effective because it's a personnel change. So the most other people, if they're not willing to do this, there's two other ways you can play getting in and out of even odd. Number one, you simply just have your boundary defensive end be the drop backer, okay? That means you're going to be training a boundary, an extra, he won't be like a linebacker. He's just the defensive end. He always plays at a boundary. This guy would be a tackle. This guy would be a nose. And, and, and you, all you're doing, if you want to call odd front, he just drops here, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. But in my experience, it's easier to teach this guy to – play to both sides because in a in an even front and to play to the boundary in a three four because the defensive linemen all they have to understand is they're 
they're playing the gap opposite of the call, regardless of if you're slanting, if you're a static front, et cetera, okay? That's, an, that's another way of, of getting to it. The other way is personnel in your guys, okay? So let's say the rush comes out and we put in what we always would consider to be, let's say, a dime, okay? Let's say he's a dime guy right here. So dime means that you are bringing in an extra backer or you can call him whatever. It doesn't make a difference. Okay. And just pretend this rush linebacker is not in the game. Okay. That's another way you can do it by personnel and your guys. And I'm going to show you examples of how we do everything. Okay. So if you want to personnel it, you want to go to an odd front, you would take a tackle out and you put in another linebacker. Okay, that's like one of the easiest ways, but it's not as effective because if the offense has any intelligence whatsoever, they're going to understand you're in the odd front. The easiest and most effective way is if you can go from an even and odd front with on field personnel. That is the most simplest way of doing things. Okay. All right. Coach, you still with me? Uh, yes, I'm with you. Um, do you like questions now or later? Um, I can take uh, some questions right now if you want to give me some questions now before I get to the film. Yes, we've got one question about your personal change. Do you change them when you go from a 5 to a 3 technique? Or do you have some, some spe specialized players? So one end is most of the time the 3 tech and one is always a 5 tech? No. No. These, the defensive ends, I'm, I'm assuming he's referring to, yeah. these two ends right here play B and C gap. Okay, they can, play, they can play both ways, right? Yes, yeah, because in my opinion, if you're teaching a kid how to play a five technique mm -hmm. and the tackle blocks down, you're teaching them to strike and squeeze and flatten out. If he's playing a three technique, what are you really teaching him? If the guard blocks down, strike, squeeze, flatten out on a guard. You're just telling him to play on a different player. And to be honest, um, if there's a tight end right here and you have a defensive end playing in a five, he's going to have to learn to take on double teams anyway. Yeah. Okay. So, does that answer? Yeah, of course. I think so. Okay. Um, Who's that? The next, next question, the next one yep. asks, um, how, do you, how do you teach an end uh, slanting into the B gap? What uh, technical points do you use, do you use there? Yeah, great point. Okay, so we teach with our defensive ends, if we're going to slant, okay, they're going to step with their gap side foot first, cross over with their far foot. They are going to rip the inside shoulder of the man, and they are reading the inside man. So just for an example, let's say this defensive end right here Let's say this defensive end right here is slanting into B gap, okay? So let's say right here, he slants into B gap. We teach him to penetrate the inside shoulder on the second step. So it's almost like you're teaching him a lateral step like a pulling guard, and then he's going to rip the play side inside number of the tackle while he's reading the guard, okay? Mm -hmm. If you don't, just understand there's, there's keys. So this guy right here is my uh, man on key. He's my pressure key if I'm slanting inside. This is my visual key for the guard. So meaning if I'm slanting in the B gap with this defensive end, this guard pulls, I'm gonna get in his hip pocket and I'm gonna squeeze him off to the ball, which means I'm gonna get in his hip pocket and ride him. If this guard right here blocks down, while this defensive end is reading this guard, he is going to squeeze him down and flatten out with the guard. If the guard high hats and pass sets right here, and I'm penetrating B gap, well then I'm gonna dip and rip and get vertical outside of the guard. You're always reading the man inside if you're slanting inside. So an example here coaches, if the nose slants to this guard, he is reading this guard, okay? Because if he reads the center, he's never going to be right. You're always reading the man that you're slanting to.
that good? Yeah, I think so. Very good, coach. Thank you very okay. much. Um, I've got a last question. Um, yes, sir. Ask about the advantage and disadvantage of having a specialized boundary players like a boundary cornerback, a boundary linebacker, or defensive end. Yeah, yeah, great question. So, in I don't know how the hash marks are there, but um, usually offensive coaches will put their worst players as the field side number one receiver furthest from the ball. Okay. Most of their power runs are going to be in the box because honestly, your offensive linemen, do they really want to pull people here? Because it's 17, four. So it's 17 yards, four inches to the hash, 17, four to here and 17, four to here. This is where your, your quicker throws, um, the best receivers backside are going to be to the boundary. So an example here, so let's say a team goes trips, okay? And trips is us. I'm just going to draw uh, put trips right here. Where's their best receiver generally? Right here. That's their best receiver. We're going to put our best cover corner into the boundary. This is the shortest throw. This is where your first down throws. If it's third and four, they're generally not going to throw a hitch out here. They're going to throw into the boundary. So we want to put our better players into the boundary, and we want to put – we want to put our less aggressive athletic players right here to the field. That's one of the advantages. Also, what, when you practice, mostly in, in, uh, in football, you're, the ball is at the hash, like 80, eight out of 10 plays. So we, get, we can practice plays from the hash mark. So you can practice, okay, there's a single receiver here. They like to run hitch and go. They like to run speed option into the boundary. Well, we can specialize these players. The problem with playing, and for like, this is over 20 years of, of coaching football, well, over like 30 of playing and coaching. But years ago, back in the day, the Sam would go to the tight end. Well, the problem is, let's say they put the tight end here. Now the Sam has to come into the boundary. Okay, and now the rush would have to come here. Now they trade the tight end and put him here. So these guys have to learn how to play on a tight end anyway. So it, to me, it's a lot more efficient and effective to just coach players to play field and boundary. Okay, great, great answer, coach. Thank you very yes, much. Yes, sir. Um, Is that it? Yeah, can, can I ask a last question? Yeah, yeah. Um, so we, we talk about odd and even fronts. Maybe, maybe you can define, define the two terms for, for our coaches. And um, do you have got situations where, where you like, lose, uh, like to uh, use odd fronts or even fronts? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and actually, that's my fault. I, 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 I assumed, I mean, I'm sorry. So we talk about odd, we're talking about a three or a five man front, odd number. When you talk about even, you're talking about four down linemen. You're talking about this, okay? Now, you can line up, you can have a linebacker always be your fourth lineman, which is what I was discussing. So you're just having this guy adjust in an even front. In an odd front, you have the ability to bring different pressures from different places and to drop eight guys. So that's one of the things, okay? So that's the difference. So let's say you wanna run an odd front and you wanna slant your guys here and you wanna play like this type of defense and the strong safety, weak safety here, and he plays to the flat. You want, to, you want to affect the five offensive linemen as much as possible. They are generally the worst athletes on the field in any, in any football, okay? So you're not really trying to beat the quarterback or the guy, the coach with the headset. You're trying to alter the blocking schemes here. And offensive linemen love for you to play a static and static means that you are always lining up with a five technique here 
and you're lining up with a one technique or an A gap player, a B gap player. So the offensive linemen always know where your five techniques are and where your one and your three techniques are. Offensive linemen love that. When you go to an odd front, now you can drop eight guys. Okay. And I can tell you, I've won games, I've lost games. Um, at Butler High School, we won three state championships. Um, at Marvin Ridge, where I'm at now, um, you know, we've consistently in the playoffs. And I can tell you, when you have a very mobile athletic quarterback, okay, you can play an odd front and drop eight and assign one of your inside or outside linebackers to spy the quarterback. The odd front is three or five, even is four, okay? And each front, like, gives you um, – the odd front gives you the ability to manipulate your fourth, fifth, and sixth rushers more than an even front. Okay, great coach. Thank you very okay. much. Yeah, yeah, no problem. I'm going to go to the video because I'm a visual learner myself. So I'm going to go to the uh, video and I'm going to show you uh, some clips right here. And I'm going to go over odd, even. And I think I actually put the clip in here. Uh, oh, there you go. And if you guys want me to send you this um, film on the playlist, it's not a problem. I can send it to. I can send it to you, coach, and then you can distribute it out. Okay, so right here, everybody can see the screen. So here we're playing. Right now we're playing odd front right here. Okay. So this is playing our defensive end, our nose, our end, our will, our Mike, our Sam Nickel, strong safety, strong corner, weak corner, weak safety, and here's our rush backer coming off the edge. So this would be our odd front, okay? It's third and seven. So on third down, we want to go to an odd front right here, okay? And this is what we called um, – oh God, I forgot what we called this. Okay, there you go. I had to move this stuff. Maverick bench three sky. So what's going to happen is he's going to slant here. He's got a two-way go on the tackle. He's going to slant. He's going to slant. He's going to come off the edge right here. We're going to drop our safety down here, and then we're going to play a middle of the field coverage. So we're going to be playing four under, three deep coverage, cover three. So four underneath, three. And the way we play it, if there's two backs in the backfield or it's trips, we play, uh, we call it roll coverage. A lot of people call it skate. So we always play like a straight zone coverage. We don't pattern match at a two back. Okay, so right here, we wanted to get a chip on this tight end right here, as you can see by the defensive end. This kid has like 20 division one college offers. He's much better than any player we have on our field. And here we go off the edge right here. And we get the sack, strip the ball, and we get it back from the offense, and we give it back to our offense right there. Okay? So that's one example. That's our odd front coming from the bench, so we would call Maverick bench. Okay, so right here, once again, third down and eight. So this is odd. This is our end. He's just standing up, okay? Our nose is here. Our end is here. Our rush backer is here. Our will, our mic. Our Sam Nichols outside of two because it's trips and we're going to be playing a cover three concept. Our weak safety is going to be dropping down here. Okay. So this is Maverick bench three sky. So now everybody's up on the line right here with the quarterback. This kid was a freshman. So we thought it was best to generate some mental and physical pressure by bringing a guy here. So all we simply did here is we brought our rush backer and we dropped our weak safety weak. Okay, and in cover three coverage versus trips, we play our weak hook player as a three up is three player. That's this guy, and he's going straight back, and he is looking for any three bending to him. Here's your middle of the field player, flat player, deep third player. He's your wall three, strong hook player, weak hook player, three up is three, weak safety, weak corner. And you know what kills me? This kid right here should come in and clean this kid's clock. We set it up pretty good. He's a damn good player. And what does he do? High school players drives me freaking insane right here. 
he could have came in there and cleaned the kid's clock and made a great play. But we got off the field right there. They completed it for three. It was third and eight, and they're punting. We're getting the ball back for the offense. Coach, fire away with any questions that, you know, may come in. Okay. Okay. No questions up to date. Okay, perfect. Do we still have people on? What, Coach? We still have people on, though, correct? Yeah, we've got 17 people on. Okay, perfect. So right here, so this is our end zone copy. And if you guys have the ability, um, get an end zone camera. Okay? It is the best thing to teach your players. Because I can be talking to our players, and I'm telling you, they don't believe you until they physically see it. Okay? So right here, this is our end, our nose, our end. And all this is is he's standing up. Our mic's up here, our will, and our rush backer. Okay, so right now we're in odd and we're slanting. So this would be Maverick, which is odd, Maverick, bench, three sky, and we call a show call. A show means our backers are up here on the line of scrimmage. The reason why they are is because we want them to check protection, like a fan protection or something, or put insert the back into protection when really we're just bringing this guy. Okay, off the edge. Great move right here. Good penetration. Our rush linebacker is all alone. All alone. Okay? And he should be able to make that sack, and he doesn't. And that's why coaches get pissed off. Because then they come to the sideline and say, Coach, run that pressure again. And, I mean, really for what? So right here, this is our odd front once again. Once again. This is our DN. He's standing up. Our nose, our end, our rush, our will, our mic. Sam Nickel, corner, middle of the field player, weak safety. Third down and 12, 14 7, second quarter. I can tell you that um, the team we're playing here is in our conference. They won this, the state championship the last two years. They're very, very good. The running back is a player called Will Shipley. He's a five star running back. He just committed to Clemson. Um, you know, we've doubled them, tripled them, and sometimes it really doesn't matter. I mean, he's scoring anyway, so it's like playing Michael Jordan. We just want to limit the amount of touchdowns. We know he's going to score. We just want to keep it under a certain amount. Okay? So now we're calling Maverick, and I think we call this Raider. So Maverick, Raider, three sky, which means we're going to bring the rush and we're bringing the will. We're going to drop our safety down here, and we're going to play three under, three deep, which means he's going to be the middle hole player. He's going to be the flat player to the trips. Corners playing the third, middle third, weak side flat, weak side deep third right here. Okay? So now we're bringing two guys off the edge. I'm sorry, one guy off the edge. He should be slamming B gap, A gap, A gap, C gap right here. And once again, you can see, the defensive end really gets good penetration right here in the B gap. Once again, right, I mean, they don't call it. They held this kid, as you can see it. They, like, throw him to the ground. I mean, it's high school referees. They're getting paid, like, $40 a game. It is what it is. But right here, I'd like to see this kid run harder and faster and try to hit the blind side right here, the quarterback. Okay? I know the kid catches the ball right here, but we come up and make a tackle. They're short. They're kicking a field goal, okay? And the biggest thing is, guys, on defense, if you're forcing the offense right here to either kick field goals or punt, that's a good thing. You don't want them to get PATs, okay? No PATs, all right? Because the offense has the option to punt. The defense does not, okay? So that's another example of running odd, okay? So right here, this is an example of running even front, okay? I'm sorry, yeah. So this is, this is a great example. So now we're playing a team. I don't know if you guys face any triple option teams right in, in Germany. That means you have a dive, a quarterback, and a pitch player, okay? So now we're going to go to our bear front. All we do in bear is we walk our will linebacker down, and he plays in the C gap, and the defensive line reduces down. So this is our rush, this is our end, nose, end, Mike linebacker. We, act, 
we actually played with um, a down linebacker. We took our other safety out of the game because they were going to just run the ball. So this is our outside linebacker, Sam Nickel, Mike, middle of the field player, strong corner. And our weak corner is somewhere. Oh, there he is hiding. Right there, our weak corner is right here. Okay, so this is bare. So this is getting to a five-man front. So to me, this is an odd front. You've got five guys right here, and all we're doing – we're doing it with on-field personnel. We're not substituting. We just walk our will linebacker down, and he plays on the edge right here. Okay? Okay, they run lead right here. Our backers fill the hole. Our safety comes up here, and we make the play on the ball. Okay? So right here, this is your uh, end zone copy. Okay? So here's our nose. Our end, our end, okay? Right here is our rush, and right here is our will. So our will linebacker comes down, he plays on the edge right here, okay? Our Mike linebacker is in the box. And everybody flows to the ball. Very, very important to teach your defensive linemen. Um, always squeeze blocks down. So you can see right here, Squeeze blocks right down right here and let your mic scrape and match flow right here. When I say scrape, he's going to scrape and basically play off the defensive lineman right here. Okay. I mean, I can come back and do like a run fit clinic, but if I start talking about run fits, I'm never going to get through the videos. Okay. So right here, this is our bare front once again, using on field personnel. Okay. On field personnel. So our will. Remember, our will is the inside linebacker to the boundary, okay? So all we do is we walk our will up and our weak safety down. We play bare three sky, which means we're running a five-man front, okay? So you have a lineman right here, one, two, three, four, and our will linebacker's right here. Our Mike linebacker, Sam Nickel, weak safety. And they motion up. Good job right here by our linebacker, shot clock and shed and ripping off. Good job by our weak safety right here. Go in there, get your ass in there and make a play on the ball. Okay, that's a good job. Okay, this is a end zone copy once again. They slide motion out, then they'll run like some type of wacky kadaki motion over here. Biggest thing right here, you want your Outside guy, your edge guy, taking on blocks right here, reading inside out. This is why we always – if you play head up or an inside shade alignment, you will always play the gap inside and read inside out. Okay, so right there, if you guys watch this play, right there. You see how he gets his hat in his, in his gap? That's something we go. We want the ball to bounce. If this kid, if this kid right here plays outside the block, right here and stays there look at what's here green grass that ain't good okay so we always teach if you're a head up technique you're reading the man inside and you're playing the inside gap if you're an inside shade of the man you're playing the inside gap and you're reading the inside gap with the man inside so you if you're head up on a tight end or you're inside shade of a tight end you're reading the tackle if you're a four technique and we're not slanting you, you're playing the B gap and you're reading the guard. It's that simple. Because if you do not have them do that, teams are going to line up and they are going to pound the ball right up where it don't shine. If you have this kid playing outside right here. Okay? Because who do you really have always playing outside? You always have a force player. So it makes no sense to have two dudes playing the same gap essentially. Okay, that's something I want to go. I know it gets getting off the topic, but I just want to make sure we're clear. So he's right there, and what happens? Forces it to our open play. Okay. So now we go right here. We're going to our even front. Same personnel. It's the same exact personnel on the field. We're just running even. So now we just call base. So it's kind of simple. Base is even. Bear is a five-man front, odd front, 50 front, 
Maverick is a, thir a 30 front. It's a three-man front, odd front. Okay, so this is base defense once again. We run some, some line stunt right here. I don't remember why on earth we would run this. This is the, actually the tackle that they, they throw the screen to. And our defensive lineman right here, he's a sophomore. He's a damn good player. Without him making that play, they get the first down. Okay. So right here we run even front with some type of uh, line stunt right here. Number 53, excellent player. And then makes the play, but we get hats to the ball right there. It's good stuff. Okay, even front, four-man front. Our rush linebacker is attached to the line of scrimmage, and we're playing three sky, which means our weak safety is going to come down here to the boundary. Okay, so this is our even front. Pull, 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 and this is something that's very important. I can tell you right now, bad job right here, man. Do not – we tell him don't cross the crack of the defensive end. If you're playing a force, you should always play outside of your C-gap player right here. That's a bad job. He should come up here and shuffle and burn his feet right here. He should not cross inside because if he crosses inside right here, guys, if this guy was really that good, he's going to bend it and wind it all the way back, okay? And after you've been doing this for a while, you know, you, 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 you know that, that ain't good. You don't want that, okay? So our defensive line played that pretty good. This kid is a sophomore, damn good player. Our other player was number 87 for us. This kid's a sophomore too. He's a damn good player, number 87. He's coming back next year. Okay, so that's our even, okay? So right here, this is even, correct? Base defense. So we would call base and we would just check coverage. So we play three sky. Okay. So that means he's going to play sky. He's going to sky down opposite the passing strength. We're going to play pattern match cover three. So he's going to say match right, Sam Nichols, match left, even front, four man front right here. Will, Mike, Sam Nichol, middle of the field safety, down safety, corner, corner over here. Biggest thing for the Sam Nickel, he's your force player, force player. Always go outside in, take on all blocks with your near leg, near shoulder, keep your outside arm and leg free. Force the ball back inside to your help, your help inside. Okay, good job right there. And I'm going to show you clips of us doing it right. I'm going to show you clips of us doing it wrong. Okay, because anybody can sit here and just give you like great clips. Okay, so this would be, this is our nose. Our end, our rush, our end, all right, so we're all clear. Our rush is the call side C gap player in base defense. 10th grade safety, because our safety got hurt the week before. Great job by him right here. Forcing the ball to cut back, we rally to the ball and make a good play. Coach, if there's any questions, fire away. Okay, yeah, we, we have got some questions. Um, we can we can save some for q, q yeah, perfect. afterwards. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Okay. So now this is a great example. So now what we're doing is we're playing our solid front. Solid is an even front, but we're playing with a four, a zero, and a four. And now what we're doing is our rush linebacker, all he's doing is standing up. That's it. That's all we're doing. Okay. So it, to, to most people, it'll look like an odd front. It's an even front, but we're getting a, a zero, a four, and a four and our rush is standing up. They had a very, very athletic running back and quarterback, so we wanted to set the front to wherever the running back, the offset running back was, if that makes sense to everybody on it, okay? Because you're gonna get more perimeter run wherever the back is set. Another reason is, if you look right here, the tighter the split to the, to the line of scrimmage, guys, you're gonna get an outside running play. The wider the split of the receiver, if this receiver is lined up out here, they're not running the ball out here. They're running the ball where they just widen the hole. Okay, so a couple of things for the defensive guys on here. Offenses, they want to gain a numerical or an athletic advantage. They want to widen the hole or they want to gain an angle. So they want to gain an angle, a blocking angle. They want to widen the hole 
They want to run, they want to get a numerical or an athletic advantage. That's it. That's all that offense is about. Those three things that was taught to me by Bill Curry. Okay. Those three things. That's all offenses want to do. They want to look out there and say, who's the worst player on defense. We're going to pick on him. We're going to try to gain a numbers advantage to run the ball here. We're going to try to widen the hole so we can run the ball inside. We want to widen the hole outside so we can line it up and run it outside. Okay. So right now they're going to run jet sweep to the boundary. And what, what we were just talking about, they cut the split of the receiver down to do what? To run the ball outside. So this would be our solid, we would call solid, and we would call it to the running back. So now the defensive line is responsible for the gap opposite of the call. The back is here. Our rush is a stand-up player right here. Here's our rush backer right here, setting the edge. Our weak safety here coming outside of the block. Okay, we make a play on the ball. Now I can show you why, like coaches, we get pissed. Okay, so before, so right now we would be in, this would be solid, back, three sky. So solid is still an even front. All we're doing is we're telling our rush linebacker, we want you to wherever the running back is. And we are going to line up solid means we're in a four, a zero, and a four. And we are going to slant opposite of the rush linebacker, opposite of the close call. And I hope you guys are understanding what I'm, I'm talking about. They motion over, and I can tell you how pissed off I am right here. This guy right here is supposed to rip through the tackle and read the guard, playing the B gap. What does he do? He is gapped out over here. So now really, and I know I'm repeating myself, but really what happens? You have a mic and you have a defensive lineman in the same gap. That's no good. You're going to lose games. What should happen is he should be here. The mic should be running through right here. But luckily, our backers are really good at covering up errors. Here's our will scraping. Our rush maintains outside leverage right here. I'm going to go ahead and make the play. Okay. So right here, we want to run solid, which is our base front, but solid, we're in a 404. Okay. We want to call it to the field. Okay. To the field. It's second and nine. So we want to run it to the field. So what do we do? On field personnel, our rush is set to the field. 404, we're slanting away. Okay. Actually, you know what? No, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. This isn't solid. This is, ba this is, that's, that's me. This is uh, base field 22. I'm sorry. So our rush is to the field and we're playing with two, two techniques right here, head up on the guards. Okay. And like I said, any head up technique, you're reading the inside band. So they're both reading the center. They're responsible for the A gaps versus run versus pass. Um, I enable them to get a two way go on this, on the guards. Okay. I don't care where they go. They just need to go sack the quarterback. Okay. I'm pretty sure once we see the uh, 22 film, the end zone copy. And a breakdown in the secondary, but I mean, that's a low probability throw right there. Yeah, perfect. Okay. So this would be, uh, this would be uh, base field 22. So we're playing a two technique here, two technique here, edge, rush right here. Okay. Mike and Will, I, I don't remember the coverage. I think we're supposed to be playing quarters coverage right here. Yeah, we're supposed to be playing quarters. So right here, let me move this down. Yeah. So right here, you can see two two techniques right there. Do a, do a terrible job getting pressure on the quarterback. Terrible. Okay. This is a good example right here. Okay, perfect example. Even front, okay? We're setting it to the field. So this would be base field three sky. So right here, gives an under call, under call. We pass off the crossers and they throw the ball for like, I don't know, a couple yard gain. We got off the field on that. Okay, 
So right now, perfect. So right now, this is our rush. He's the call side C-gap player using on-field personnel, his hands in the dirt. Defensive end to the calls in a three technique, our nose away from the calls playing the A-gap, our defensive end away from the calls playing the away side C. Will, Mike, middle of the field safety, our down safety is off the screen, he's playing over here. Crossing routes right here, we call under, under, under. Our Mike and Will are working off number three. The Will sees him coming back over here. He's got to match the final three to his side. Okay, and I'm telling you, whatever you're running right here, you guys got to maintain contain on the quarterback right here. Okay, they're going to hold your players every time. It doesn't matter. They're never going to call it. Okay. So right here, running. This is what we're doing right here. We're running solid. I believe we're running. Yeah, we're running solid right here. So we're going to run solid, and we're going to run it to the field. Solid field three sky. Okay. Okay. So right there. Yep. Perfect. So we may be. We're going to be in a four zero four, and all we're doing guys, is we are using the rush linebacker as the fourth D lineman, and we're going to manipulate where he is in our base run. Okay? So right here, we called to the field. And they're just responsible for the gap away from the call. That's all we're doing. Okay? All right, Coach, you want to send in some questions? Yes, we can. we can do this. Do you want to do that? Do you, is there something? And if you guys want me to show other stuff, I mean, let me know. So I think we, we've got some questions for you for your rush packages. So if, the first one is, is about the R. Do you always rush rush your R or you or will you drop him into coverage and rush another linebacker? Yes. Yes, we do. We do. Um, so... I'll go to our playbook. Yes, we do. We do rush other people. Um, just sorry about that. Let me move this up. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so this is um, – yeah, so this is an example. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over – um, that's a great question right here. So right here, I'll show you what we call a plug. So we call plug, it should be right here. Okay, so here we go. We go uh, Maverick and we call plug. Plug means we're going to bring the inside linebacker opposite of the running back. So our rush is going to drop, okay? Or he can be in man coverage or whatever the case may be. Okay, so this is a good example right here. So this is Maverick, odd front, three down front right here, okay? This is our rush, and he's more of a, a DB than he is like a linebacker in the, in, yeah, for, this, for this year right here, for this package, this team. Very, very good uh, players right here. A um, bunch of players went and played in college. So plug means our inside linebacker opposite the running back is plug in the open gap, okay? So when we call plug, so we would call Maverick, we would call plug, and then we we call whatever coverage call we want to call behind it. Okay, so this is an example of our inside linebacker plugging the gap, and we ran like a little line stunt right here, and we come up and make the play. Okay, that's one example right there. Okay, we'll, we'll call it a plug, and then the other. I mean, we can bring like anybody that we want, any any time. Okay, but generally speaking, we like to bring our rush more because he is our one of our better players. Okay, great coach. Um, yes, sir. So you showed us a blitz where you where you um, where you uh, call the blitz depending on the position of the running back. Um, do you react about do, how do you react to a running back or shift pre-snap? Does that matter or not? No, we keep the blitz on. Okay. Yeah, if you're. Um, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a question that I get a lot. Um, and I can, I can – the most efficient way of doing it is keeping the blitz on. 
okay? Because mm-hmm. I can tell you from coaching kids, once you start, like, really getting into stuff like that, so I, I, I just want to draw it up here. So let's say we want to bring the rush here. We want to call it to the back. I'm assuming that coach is saying, and we want to play, let's say we're playing some type of uh, cover three concept right here, and our weak safety is going to be down, our corners up, and our backers are just going to gap a line right here. So let's say we want to bring it, we want to call it to the running back, okay? We want to call it to the back. So we're going to be slanting here, so we're going to be doing this. And we're going to bring our rush linebacker off the edge. Pre-snap, if they do this and they move that guy here, we are not changing it. We are keeping it on. Okay, great. Um, yes, sir. So that was the first questions. And now we have got some questions about um, um, how often do you stunt or do you have got some other ways to disguise your front? So maybe, maybe you... Uh, Maybe you do, are you doing some pre-snap shifting from odd to even front to disguise in, in yeah. what front you are. So may, maybe you do it, uh, maybe, for example, yeah. 30, 30, 30 um, pre-snap shifts, base, and post-snap movements with slants. So you do something about that, like that? Yeah, yeah, we do. So um, I will get um, – let me, let me try to think. So – so I'm going to go back into the film. I'm going to show you some stuff. Um, so we do we do do that, and the biggest so we we do do a lot of that. But I, I would tell you in high school, running like stunts up front with your D line, like that, um, you got to really work on that, and you got to have the personnel to do that okay so it, it just is an example like i'll go back to the clip that i just showed you right here um so we're running let's say we run our dime package right here so we're running this is our odd front right here and let's say i'm going to go back here and we're going to talk about the plug that we just so we brought you saw the just saw the video clip right here so now we're going to talk about stunts Okay, so we're going to bring a plug. So this would be Maverick plug, and we're going to run man under two deep. And if we call it from the field right here, okay, we have a call that puts our end here and our nose wrapping to the outside right here. I don't know if you guys can see that. So our end comes inside, our nose comes outside right here, and we plug the opposite gap. So that's one movement that we do. Okay, and we couple it like that. We will always generally twist away from the pressure. Okay, so that's one way we do it. And another way we do it is I'm going to go to our D line, uh, our D line stuff right here. So for our D line stunts. And I don't know if I have the video in here, but gap stunts right here. Okay. So right here, if we want to call a, a nut stunt, that always talks to the nose and the away side end. The nose always goes first. The end goes second. Jam always talks to the C gap player away from the call. So he's always gonna come into B gap. That's what we call jam, okay? And then stir is what we have a full line game on. So we play generally with an end and a nose in here. They're gonna penetrate outside. Our rush is gonna jab step and come underneath. Our end is gonna jab and come underneath. Okay, so these are three basic stunts and we combine them with blitzes so in the last one you saw um we ran basically a nut stunt but we ran it out of the odd package and we plugged an inside linebacker okay i think that 
answered a lot of questions. We've got three of them. So thank, okay. you, thank you very much, Coach. And uh, we've got two, I think, three more questions left. Uh, one is, you talked about spill, spill and box. Do you have got different rules for different players? Maybe uh, your weak side safety or your Sam uh, will box, will box um, um, a run play and the defense line spill, or do you spill all the way? Yeah, so um, I'm going to try to get to – I just want to make sure that I don't, like, lose you guys on the screen right here. Can you still see my computer screen? Uh, no, we, we can see your huddle play. You can just see the huddle account? Yes. Okay. All right, so you can see my cursor moving around? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to try to get – so what we do is the only time we will box our defensive – our C-gap players is if we are playing cover one, okay, or we are playing like a bear front, a five-man front, okay? And the reason for that is – once you start getting into um, like changing up your 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 spill, am I boxing? Am I spilling it? Like that's something you're really gonna have to rep um, with your guys, okay? And I'm gonna try to go. I don't remember if I have like cover one, two by two cover. I'm gonna see if um, I have any film right here. So we always will spill the ball with our C-gap players unless we're in bear mm -hmm. or we are in some type of man coverage right here, okay? And this is a good example. Like before, uh, we were talking about D-line stunts and we talked about jam. So this would be our defensive end to the open B-gap. So this would be close. So let's say we just want to run base field jam um, cover one. Let's say, for example, yeah, there you go, cover one, okay? Jam talks to the weak side end, the end to the nose, to the open B gap. He's going to rip inside, and he actually makes the play right there, okay? So we always talk about spill or box. When we're playing cover one, we generally want our defensive ends to box the ball back inside. We don't want them to spill it because I don't know if this is going to be an example. All right, perfect. All right, hold that. So before we were talking about um, spilling the ball on the outside. So right now we're boxing the ball because if you watch the screen, we are in cover one. So he's got him man to man. So the problem is if you spill it and this kid runs a wheel, this run runs a post. Well, he's taking the wheel. He's running with the post, right? Well, who are you spilling the ball to? Nobody. Okay? So we always have our ends box the ball in when we're playing some type of cover one. So this is an example of box where you're going to take it on with your inside arm and leg, and a lot of people call it a hard joint, where we tell the players one of two things is going to happen. You're going to put your ass in the gap, or you're going to stick the offensive player there. Well, he was a darn good player. He went on to play like junior college in Kansas. He was a darn good player for us. He puts the offensive player in there, comes off, and then makes a play. Okay, so that, that's an example of jam for the first one, and that's an example of a box fit. Okay. You got another one, Coach? Um, yes, we've got one, one last question. Um, yes, sir. Uh, on on your personal, how do you choose your personal for, for example, the R when you're switching on field between odd and even front? Um, do you choose the most most athletic uh, defensive lineman or a bigger or better rusher from the linebackers? How do you? Yeah, that's a great. Yeah, that is an excellent question. So, um, let me go and I'll go to. Um, Okay, so 
I'm going to go over on the video for the last question. Great question right here. Okay. Our Sam Nickel is like 80% of a safety, 20% of a linebacker. Okay. Our rush linebacker is more, he is one of our better players. He is a guy who can play an edge on the defensive line. And he is one of our most um, athletic and strongest players out of the linebacker core that we have. The Will and the Mike linebacker, okay? And I'll go to the end zone shot right here. Perfect. These guys right here, Mike and the Will, they are your prototypical inside linebackers. They're more, more of your pluggers, okay? Our rush linebacker is more of a guy who can play in space. And this is a this is answers the question from the previous coach, why we play like field and boundary. Well, we if we want to drop our rush and we want him to play as an outside linebacker, we want him to play to the shortest side of the field. We don't want him running around in space. Okay. So our nose is a true nose. Our two defensive ends can play B or C gap. Our rush can play more of a defensive end than he is a linebacker. So when we go, let's say an example, we do like a, a four cone drill or a box drill. And I'll look at that and I'll say, okay, well, who's more, the most athletic out of the defensive lineman? Okay, this kid's the most athletic. Okay, can he play inside linebacker? He's not really that great of, an, of a reader right here, reading guards and stuff. So what really are we ask him to do? We're always asking him to play on an edge. And anybody who's played football or has coached it for a long time, reading an edge is a lot simpler than reading inside. Like, this is very, very hard for an inside linebacker to read a guard pulling, guard comboing, guard pass setting, dart plays, everything like that. So that's how we, we want one of our most athletic defensive ends, who's not really as good of a reader, to play the rush. Usually, I will tell you, this kid – is usually one of our better up and coming players. He just doesn't have enough experience to play in the box. Great coach. Yes, sir. Yeah, I think I think had I had wish I uh, I wish I had known that for for about two or three years. I think I can use. I think about a player where which uh, which one uh, would fit perfectly into the R position, but we. Yeah, do you? you? You had a player like that? Yeah, yeah, I think so. He's he's a great rusher. He was a great rusher, but not a big big reader. He wasn't wasn't very strict strict in scheme. He he was just a natural hitter, but not the one you can count on to to uh, to hold a gap or something like that. So I think yeah. that position could fit him very very good. Yeah, and it's and it's interesting. It, you know what's interesting about it is is like we get caught up so much in scheme. Um, every program has a player like that. Mm. They really do. Like there's so many players that you know you, you you go and you're like, well, do we have a player that can play that position? Yeah, you do. You you probably have like, um, you know, like a 16, 17 year old kid in your pro like you do the under 19. Yes, yeah, we, we do an under 19. But Okay, so what I'm saying is you have a player that is not really that great of a reader, but he is, like, really, really good at um, – so, for an example, like, I'll put up something here. So, here you go. This would be a rush, Sam Nickel, Mike Will, weak safety, strong safety, weak corner, strong corner. So what are you asking him to do? You're just asking him to drop right here. So if you have an inexperienced player who will be good in some years, but you don't want to ask him to do a lot, well, you just stick him right here. Because really, what is he doing? He's playing the flat. Just tell him to get underneath routes and stuff like that. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's not that um, – it's not that hard to teach – it's harder to teach kids inside the box here this is really hard this is not very hard this is not very hard okay and, and I'll be honest like we take our player with the least amount of football intelligence 
who's a rise, who's a very good athlete, who's more of a safety than a linebacker, we stick him as the Sam Nickel out here. Okay, because he really doesn't have to do a lot. And this is a this is to answer a question. So a rush linebacker, is there a lot of space here? Not really. I mean, you're talking 17-4 right here, but really he's already five yards off. I mean, he's got maybe like 10 to 12 yards. You're not really asking him to play a lot in space. But it gives you a different look, and you can drop eight, you can rush four, you can rush six, whatever you want to do. So, Great coach. Yes, sir. Yeah, amazing stuff. So I think on, over the last years, I know, I know some players who could, who could fill the role for us. Yeah. And you probably have like a nickel or a Sam linebacker mm. who can probably fill that outside like linebacker position to the field who's very athletic, um, but he's not necessarily going to be able to plug an A or B gap. Yeah, that's true. You know, so I appreciate the opportunity to come on with you guys. Um, I, I can tell you that um, it, it's truly an honor to represent Marvin Ridge football here in the States and talk to you guys out there. Um, and our door is always open. Uh, we need to collaborate with each other at this level, at college and the NFL level. Um, you know, our goal is to get better, to help our players uh, be both excellent on the field and off the field. And I really appreciate everything that you're, uh, you're doing for our sport, Coach. Yeah, Coach, uh, thank you very much for your time. Um, you've, yes, done a, you've done a wonderful job. Um, I, I think for, 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 my, for myself, I, 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 will pull a lot of out, I, I will pull a lot out of it. So thank you very much. Um, appreciate you coming on and um, educate us, help us to to spread knowledge and grow the game. So, coach, thank you very much. We keep in touch. Yes, sir. Stay safe during this time. You you too, and thank you everybody for coming on. Yeah. Goodbye, coach. Yes, sir. Take care. God bless.